Hey, I'm Native Mammoth Press, and today on the Multicade, I'm going to show you the future of baseball with Super Baseball 2020. Okay, so full disclosure, by the future of baseball, I mean the future of baseball according to Japan as told in 1991. Now, I don't know if they actually thought that baseball would progress to the point like they show in the game, but nobody could have predicted a pandemic. Nobody could have predicted that we would have nearly lost baseball this year altogether. But I don't really understand the frame of reference for why they thought that baseball would look like this. This is Super Baseball 2020. It is the future of baseball today. All right. Boom. We got Exciting League and Fighting League. Let's go with Exciting League because you know it's exciting. American Dream, Tokyo Samurais, Naples Seagulls, Taiwan Mega Powers, okay, uh, Korean Dragon, and the Battle Angels. I'm gonna go Battle Angels. It's an all-female team because in the future, uh, baseball is co-ed, which is great. It's just great for baseball, and I, I very much support it. Uh, Japan in '91 figured that you know, in the year 2020, we should have enough time to be more inclusive, right? Right? Not only is there men and women on the field, but there's also, you know, because it is the future, androids, robots. But it's not enough that there's, you know, robots on the field, but, you know, the humanoids, <laughs> humanoids, uh, the, the, the human players also have to be cybernetically enhanced. Because, uh, you know, to be fair, right? You can't just have a bunch of robots on the field and they're peak performance. Even the ref is, a, is an android. It's a very inclusive future. Baseball. In 2020. Super, one might say. Oh, no, 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 no. You just ran right by it. Ugh. They call that an error. I'm pretty sure in the future they call it a, an error also. Ugh, really stealing bases? Bunch of thieves. And right off the bat, too, man, they're, they're not messing around. Haha! <laughs> That's what you get. Get me in a pickle. I own pickles! So obviously you can see a major difference in how the, uh, the field is kind of set up. Um, it's a... It, an entire enclosure. They call it like a, a an egg. Um, there is no outside of the field. Uh, there's no parking lot. You know, <laughs> all the fans are encased in like a capsule, so to speak. Like they're they got glass coverings. You know, for protection. It's the future of baseball. There's a lot going on. It's very dangerous. So besides the uh, the overall look of the field, um, the, the you know the back the back of it seemed to be exposed. You know, fans were you know, exposed in the back. I guess they don't feel like they're at so much danger. But if you look on the left and right side of the field, especially like right at the first and third baseline, you'll see that the foul line, or the foul zone that they have marked off, um, stops flush with the bases instead of continuing all the way to the back of the field like traditional baseball does. 
And the reason for that, um, they just wanted to update, I suppose, the, the rules of the foul zones um, where they stop shy uh, right at first and third. Outside of that, outside of the, the main, you know, diamond area, uh, the ball, it's a fair zone. Now, traditionally, when the ball leaves the field, like into the into the stands or into the crowd, um, in traditional baseball, in a fair zone, it's considered a home run. But in this game, it's not. Um, and that's the trade-off. You get more of the field, you have more... Um, space for your hits to stay in play the trade-off however is that your home run zone is a lot more limited um, when the ball goes out of the field so to speak um, it lands in the stands but it bounces around in the crowd and then makes its way back to the field and when it comes back to the field the play remain uh, resumes from there In fact, the only home run zone in the entire game is straight back. Uh, the That home run zone that's actually lit up and blinking at you there on the screen, that's the only area that is considered a home run if the ball goes over. So there's a lot more play in the field, a lot more action going on, keeps, keeps things moving more and more and more. The trade-off, however, is that your active home run area is less and harder to hit. Um, oh, what? Oh, we're in a pickle again. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, I own pickles! Another addition to the field that they added are these little hot spots that they labeled, uh, stop and jump um they there's these bright squares that um that kind of flash at you and really it's just to kind of make the the outfield plays a little more dynamic um when you or the ball land in the stop zone the play is immediately stopped and uh and you know the next pitch takes on from there um so you kind of, you know, it's really frustrating whenever uh, the ball bounces over it and your player who's chasing after it hits that zone and then they stop. Well, somebody else has to take over and try and get the ball from there. It's frustrating. It just gives a little bit of extra spice to the plays. The jump areas, which are aligned more on the outside of the walls, are designated for um, just kind of last-ditch effort, like really dynamic... Uh, Basically booster packs. You you, <laughs> it's like you ignite your uh, your jet packs on your back and uh, shoot straight for the sky to get a really like dynamic catch. Um, in case of like a home run or a foul that goes over the wall. So besides the the field um, enhancements and and future techie look of the field, you also get. Um, a very enhanced look to the players and again it's not just for cosmetics they they actually do have a, a reason for it i mean it is kind of part of the theme you know being all futuristic and techie but you can actually buff your players you buff your players by um let's see for example uh batter miko each player has a bat uh, a hitting arm field arm pitching arm or a robot you can switch out the player for a robot with an, an increased stats but um I'm going to buff Miko with a hitting arm, give her a little bit more power in her swing. Now each of these, oh no, this is uh, no, not bode well for me. <laughs> now each of these come in three tiers, a 2,000, 5,000, and a 10,000 tier. Um, and you earn those uh, by paying for them, you know, with money um, throughout the game certain plays and certain achievements will earn your team money and you use them to buff your team your your teammates uh oh my pitcher's about to blow might have to switch him out soon so with that in mind uh where you can buff your teammates your teammates can also get fatigued get worn out um if you let them get too fatigued they'll eventually collapse or get taken out of play 
in the case of the robots, they fizzle out with electronics, right? They, uh, they have electrical issues, as you see here. Um, and then the next stage, they'll catch on fire. <laughs> and then after they catch on fire, they'll just explode. And it's pretty funny. In fact, I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, change him out. Rachel. All right, Rachel, do this. Oh, ooh, double play. I got 300 bucks for doing that. That's gonna come in handy. So when it comes to the players, in this intense futuristic baseball, you obviously need some heavy, heavy armor, right? You need cybernetics, you need uh, robotics and androids. You need, you need all of that. And to be honest with you, I think it's awesome. In fact, I think the whole co-ed aspect of it is great. I think it's, you know, it's long overdue. It's, it's a welcome change. So being the future of baseball, having players, you know, that are cybernetic enhancements and having cyborgs actually and, and androids out there on the field, of course, it's only right that they would have proper protection. Armor, cybernetics themselves, right? And you can see just by looking at them that they're pretty geared up. They're pretty, pretty high tech looking. When it comes to the women though, I can't help but wonder if their uniforms are really that conducive for baseball, even in the future. I mean, sure, they got armor, right? They've got the shoulder pads. They've got the 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 I guess battle armor corset, um, which may or may not be an adequate uh, support system for athletics. Who knows? I'm not a woman. They got the elbow pads. They got the leggings. They got everything you know that you would imagine. But of course, they have to have the shorty shorts. I mean, obviously, the men aren't wearing shorty shorts, right? And they got the huge hair, the Dr. Ro Dr. Roxo hair. They got the shorty shorts, they got the, the knee pads, they got the arm pads, they got the helmet, but they've also got these battle armored high heels. Now, look, I, I've never worn high heels. I, never, I, I don't think I could wear high heels. There's a lot of women out there who do incredible things in high heels. I mean, you know, sure, maybe it's practical I don't know um, but what do you think would you wear this kind of uniform in the field I mean we've seen what women look like on the field today in women's baseball it's very similar to the men you don't see the men wearing this stuff in fact they look like master chief right it's like you've got you've got a dress down <sighs> In fact, you've got like a dressed down Samus of Super Metroid versus Mega Man, right? See, now they're going to put landmines in the on the outfield. Which is, you know, as if things aren't intense enough. Eventually, and they and they add more and more periodically throughout the game, every inning or so. Eventually, it gets so heavy out there it gets impossible to move without hitting them. All right, Master Chief. See, no shorty shorts there, right? Like a green Mega Man with a bat. And that's a home run for them, I bet. Oh, let's see if we can jump. No. Oh, my. See, that's what I get for making fun of him. Lucky seventh inning. This is when both teams get a, a hitting power buff. As if they need it. Oh my. There's a power throw where if you hear the uh, the pitcher exclaim, they, they put an extra power on their, on their throw. You do that by holding down while you're pitching. But if they hit it, it's very likely that it could go over the wall. Because that extra power is translated to the hit as well. 
I really liked the um, the more novelty sports games when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I wasn't a big sports fan. I was I didn't really follow sports very much. But there were certain sports games that were just fun, um, and this was definitely one of them because it was all futuristic and and crazy. You know, the colors, the the character designs were amazing. The music was amazing. You know, at the time, I you know I played it on Sega Genesis. Um, this game came out in '91 on the arcade, um, and then it was ported uh, to Sega Genesis and Super NES uh, in '93. And that's what I played it on was the Genesis. Um, Electronic Arts, I think, did the, the port. Um, and actually, one of my favorite video game artists actually did uh, all the artwork for them when they transferred the, the title over to the Sega Genesis. His name was uh, Mark Erickson. Um, he did a lot of stuff. He did um, a lot of Mega Man artwork. He did a lot of, he did some of the, uh, the hockey stuff. Nowadays, he's still working. He does graphic design. Um, I think uh, Shock Top was uh, the the late or the the logo for Shock Top is one of his. Um, he's still working, still knocking out a lot of cool stuff. So it's good to see. Uh, but when they brought this to the Genesis, that's where I jumped in. Um, like I said, the music, the artwork, the um, just the character designs, all the crazy electronics and the robots—it just captured my attention. Um, you know, this and the likes of, you know, Mutant League football and Mutant League hockey, you know, those were a couple others that I really enjoyed. But I wasn't really a big sports kid. Uh, my best friend actually was a huge sports nut. Everything we did was sports. All we did was play sports. He played on teams. I just played with him and got my ass kicked all the time. The trade-off, though, was that uh, after playing, you know, whatever sport we did all day, um... We uh, would go inside and then play like Mortal Kombat, which was, you know, a good trade-off. That was where I kind of felt like I had more of a chance, at least. Stealing bases, thieves. Needless to say, I sucked at this game back then as I do now. And it's about that time in the game where they just start knocking home runs left and right because this game's not designed for you to win. They want you to keep paying quarters to lose. Because it's a pay to lose. Strike! Mocking me. Ugh. Well, there it is. Three to zero. Not too bad. Not that great. But not the worst. And there you have it. Super Baseball 2020. I hope you enjoyed the game. Thank you for watching. If there's any other games that you'd like to see me play, just let me know in the comments. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps me out, plus it'll notify you with new videos as they come out. Thanks again.